I usually don't do car stereo, but in my quest to get reasonable sound quality in my car, I found a solution you, as music lover, might also like as an alternative for Bluetooth. Airplay uncompressed. This was the problem I had. With my new car would I go for A2DP Bluetooth or just plug in the headphone output of my iPhone 6 into the audio input of my car stereo. A2DP Bluetooth was a fine option but on my car the upgrade was relatively expensive while the SBC codec of A2DP Bluetooth, the one used for stereo audio, didn't appeal to me. Not that it would be a bad codec. To judge that I would have had to evaluate it thoroughly. But the idea that the AAC coded music on my iPhone was decoded to be coded again in SBC wasn't a nice one. Two different codecs both having their own rules for throwing away information might lead to a very unpleasant sound as research has shown already years ago. So I chose the option to use cables for a short while. Not the most attractive option either since I had to run wires from the glove box to the iPhone. Then I thought I might be able to program a Raspberry Pi as Wi-Fi access point and install SharePoint, a program to let the Raspberry Pi function as an AirPlay station. Googling for a ready to use image that did just that, I came across the Nexus Linka. The Linka measures about 85 by 50 by 15 mm and weighs about nothing, slightly over 50 grams. On one end two cables come out, one ending in a USB connector for powering and one in a 3.5 mm jack that does the audio output. There are no controls apart from a reset button hidden behind a very tiny hole. The second hole holds the blue status LED of which the manual only says that it will blink when functioning. Just stick the USB plug into the USB power socket in the car and the audio jack into the AUX input of your car stereo. In my case the AUX is in the glove box together with a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. So I had to use an adapter to the 5 volt USB socket. Since the power socket in the glove box is switched on and off by the ignition key, the Linka is automatically switched on and off too. When switched on it takes about 7 seconds to boot after which a Wi-Fi access point becomes available. You simply log your smartphone onto it and in the music player program that you use select it as an AirPlay station. Since AirPlay uses lossless compression no quality is lost by another codec. According to the manufacturer's information it is also possible to connect it with an Android phone and use DLA for playback. There are also programs that enable AirPlay on Android devices. Convenience wise the Linka isn't as comfortable as the Bluetooth A2DP option where the Bluetooth automatically connects and even starts playback with the Linka you do need to start the player and select the Linka as AirPlay output. But since it boots within 7 seconds, it's probably ready for use before you have buckled up. On the other hand, only the music playing is heard over the car speakers and not the bleeps and other sounds a smartphone might make. For phone calls you can still use the car's Bluetooth and the navigation so software I use also uses Bluetooth for driving instructions. Since I only want to use it in a car, I didn't try it on one of the stereo setups I normally use. Although you could link the Linka to your home Wi-Fi ne network, it is intended to be used as an access point. In the car the unit surprised me since it sounded more open and better in control than the iPhone's headphone output connected over a cable to the same aux in. That might sound strange. But a headphone output is not necessarily the best to drive a line input, as where the Walsam WM8988 DAC chip used offers proper line outputs. Some say that the DAC causes the better sound. 
Of course, if the DAC isn't good, the sound would be bad. But the difference between the DAC in the iPhone and the Linka can't cause such a difference. There are no hiccups, no nasties, it works stable and it sounds great. Is this a proper review? No. I just came across a good solution for my car and thought it would be nice to share it, since I like it. It was the only device I could find, but there might be others around and they might even be better and for less money. But at just under 90 euros I find it a very fine solution. There are people that don't like the fact that Wi-Fi access is not password protected. Others might not like the fact that they have to switch over the iPhone to the Linka. But who will break into the Linka? What damage can be done and how much trouble is it to tap the AirPlay icon and select the Linka? It does improve the sound in the car compared to using the headphone output. If you are also interested in further improvements in the sound at home, Subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the link. If you have a question, post it below this video, please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>